L-L-L. Oh. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with Night After Night. <laughs> Everything from soup to jello. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the best way I know to describe a really complete meal. For Jell-O adds to any table that grand final touch of pleasure and perfection. Its rich glowing color is a tempting invitation to pick up that spoon and start right in on this swell, inviting dessert. And just to taste it is to know the ultimate in good things to eat. Yes, there's nothing more attractive than a bright, shimmering mold of delicious Jell-O. And there's certainly nothing more delightful than Jell-O's rare, distinctive flavor, as enticing and refreshing as the juicy, ripe fruit itself. So friends, make that next meal really complete by topping it off with a top-notch Jell-O dessert made with any of Jell-O's six delicious flavors. Ask your grocer for several packages of Jell-O tomorrow. And when you buy, look for those big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O, and Jell-O spells a treat. was night after night played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you our master of ceremonies. A man hold who... it, Don, Don, hold it, hold it. Jack isn't here yet. Well, where is he? Well, he's out in the hall talking to Orson Welles on the telephone. You mean Orson Welles, the famous actor? Yeah. What's he talking to him about? Well, it's a long story. Jack is still burned up because he didn't win the Academy Award this year. So from now on, he's going in for heavy dramatic stuff. And right now, he's out there trying to get Orson Welles to coach him. Ain't that a Lulu? But gee, Mr. <laughs> Benny's a comedian. <laughs> What does he want dramatic lessons for? Well, that's what I say. You ought to stick to them big shoes and baggy pants. <laughs> but I guess I better go out in the hall and get them. Yeah, tell him to make it snappy. We're on the air. Okay. Uh, yes, I understand, Orson. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Quite. Oh, but definitely. Uh, very well, Orson. I shall be expecting you within the hour. Hey, Jackson, we're waiting for you. I'll be there in a moment, Phil, old boy. Uh, by the way, Orson, shall I send my car for you Or will you take a cab? I mean cab <laughs> Oh, very well I shall be looking forward to your visit Thanks very much <laughs> uh, Goodbye Well, that's that Say, uh, kind of putting on the dog there, wasn't you? Phil, don't say wasn't you It hurts my ear Well, get a load of him He talks to Orson Welles for two minutes And my English ain't good enough for him And don't say ain't Heavens. Oh, stop with that highbrow stuff. What are you trying to do? Make me feel subconscious? <laughs> That's self-conscious. And listen, Phil, when Orson Welles gets here, will you do me a favor and talk just with your hands? <laughs> I'll tell him you've got laryngitis. Come on, let's go inside. Yes, let's join the others. Hip, hip. <laughs> Gee, you're funny. You know, Phil, it's amazing that you haven't got your own program Well, I may have one of these days I often dream about my own show Oh, you do? Well, maybe I can arrange for the Sandman to tear up your option and <laughs> sprinkle it on you Come on, subconscious Oh, hello, Dennis Hello, Mr. Benny Oh, hello, Don, I'm sorry I'm late Oh, it's all right, Jack uh, Shall I go ahead now with your introduction? Oh, don't bother, let it go tonight Well, no build-up for the star, huh? It isn't necessary, Phil I think I'm fairly well-known, don't you? You're Don Tootin Everybody knows you, Mr. Benny Why, your name is famous from coast to coast Well, thanks, Dennis That kid'll work next year <laughs> That's not flattery, Phil I've been in show business for a long time And naturally, my name has become more or less familiar Well, let me tell you something, Jackson When I go out on the road with my band I hit a lot of towns where they never even heard of you No kidding That's a fact Well, Phil, in the kind of towns you play You can get eight to one that shoes are a passing fancy <laughs> You never played a town yet Where you didn't have to get off a train and get on a bus Get off the bus and get on a horse Get off the horse and crawl through the brush <laughs> You're not an entertainer, you're an explorer 
Uh, say, Don. Yes, Jack. I meant to tell you, I just spoke to Orson Welles on the phone, and he's coming over in a little while. Oh, yes, uh, Phil mentioned something about it. He said you wanted Mr. Welles to coach you in dramatics. Yes, and he has consented to help me out. Gee, Mr. Benny, you're a swell actor now. You don't need any coaching. Yes, I do, Dennis. That's right. Don't change your mind so fast. <laughs> You know, Don, I've been doing comedy for a long time in radio and pictures, and, oh, comedy is all right, but I've decided to go in for deeper things. Uh, now, Dennis. Yes, please? Uh, Mr. Uh, Wells will be here pretty soon, so I think you ought to get your song over with. Have you got something ready? Yes, Mr. Benny. This being St. Patrick's Day, I'm going to sing a real old Irish folk song called Phil the Fluter. Well, that's very apropos. Go ahead, Dennis. Okay. Say, uh, Jack, I forgot to ask you, how's Mary getting along? Mary? Oh, she's much better, Don, but she'll have to stay in bed a couple more days. Well, I'm very glad she's improving. Hey, what's the matter with Mary? Oh, she had a bad... Uh, Dennis, you can close your mouth. We're going to talk for a while. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh... She had a bad cold, Phil I think it was a touch of the flu But she's getting along fine Has Mary got a nurse? Yes, Phil, and she's gorgeous Well, all right <laughs> And her husband, who was six feet four And could break you right in two Isn't bad looking either Sing, Dennis I think there'll be no more interruptions <laughs> You heard of Phil the Fluter of the town of Ballymuck The times were going hard with him, in fact the man was broke So he just sent out a notice to his neighbors one and all As how he liked their company that evening at a ball And when right now he was careful to suggest to them If they found a hat of his convenient to the door The more they put in whenever he requested them The better would the music be for dancing on the floor With the toot of the flute and the twiddle of the fiddle oh, Up and in the middle like a heron on the griddle oh, Up, down, hands around, crossing to the wall Oh, hadn't we the gaiety of Phil the Fluter's ball? Little Mickey Mulligan got up to show them how And then the widow Cafferty stepped out and makes her bow I could dance you off your legs as she as sure as you were born If you'll only make the piper play the hair was in the corn So Phil plays up to the best of his ability The lady and the gentleman begin to do their share Faith and Mick, it's you that has agility Be God and Mrs. Cafferty, you're leaping like a hare With the toot of the flute and the twiddle of the fiddle oh, Up and in the middle like a heron on the griddle oh, Up, down, hands around, crossing to the wall Oh, hadn't we the gaiety at Phil the Fluter's ball? Then Phil the Fluter tipped to wink to little crooked Pat I think it's nearly time to see for passing round the hat So Patty passed the hat around and looking mighty cute Says you've got to pay the piper when he tutors on the flute Then all joined in with the greatest joviality Covering the buckle and the shuffle and the cut Jigs Whopper danced of the very finest quality But the widow beat the company at handle in the foot With the toot of the flute and the twiddle of the fiddle low oh, Up and in the middle like a heron on the griddle low oh, Up, down, hands around, crossing to the wall Oh, hadn't we the gaiety at Phil the Fluter's ball? Phil the Fluter, sung by Dennis Day, a real Irishman. You know, Dennis, it's a funny thing, but you're the only Irishman I ever met that I can lick. Don't be too sure about that, buddy. <laughs> I guess I picked the wrong day, folks. Huh? <laughs> Say, I wonder what's keeping Orson. He ought to be here pretty soon. Well, Jack, you must remember that Mr. Wells is a very busy man. Between his radio program and directing plenty to do. Oh, I know he has a heavy schedule. In fact, I don't know how he'll ever find time to come over here and help you out. Well, you see, Don, he and I are old friends. We went to high school together. High school together? Why, Orson Welles is only 24 years old. Phil, he graduated from high school at the age of five. Don't you read the magazine? <laughs> why, why, when he was seven, he played Shylock in The Merchant of Venice, and the beard was his own. So don't tell me about Orson Welles Pretty smart youngster, huh? Smart? Don, if you could have seen him in that high chair In front of the class doing his geometry lessons on his bib <laughs> Well, it was simply phenomenal 
Is he going to teach you geometry, Mr. Benny? Uh, no, Dennis. He's coming over to coach me in dramatic art. And I'll tell you one thing, fellas. With his technique and my feeling for the finer things, who knows what results I can attain? Who knows where I can go? Oh, boy, if Mary was only here. <laughs> Never mind, Phil. I'm quite serious. Anyway, when Orson gets... Oh, gosh, that must be him. Come in. Pardon me, has Mr. Wells arrived yet? No, not yet. I'm his secretary, Miss Wentworth. If you don't mind, I'll wait for him. Oh, no, no, no. Come right in. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Harris, will you please show Miss Wentworth to a chair? Sure, park the chassis here, babe. <laughs> Phil, uh, make yourself uh, comfortable, Miss Wentworth. Now, as I was saying, fellas, when Mr. Wells gets here, I don't want any heckling. Just behave yourselves while we're rehearsing. Well, what do you intend doing tonight, Jack? Uh, goodbye, Mr. Chips? Oh, no, Don. We're going to work up to that gradually. First, he's going to teach me dramatic delivery and enunciation and how to breathe. Isn't that right, Miss Wentworth? I can hear you breathing way over here. <laughs> I mean correctly. <laughs> you know, fellas, there's a way of breathing when you read lines that... Oh, pardon me. Hello? Mr. Wells? Oh, he hasn't arrived yet, but uh, I'll have him call you. Goodbye. Well... Who was that, Mr. Benny? It was... Oh, darn it, I was so excited I forgot to ask. Well, you're a fine secretary. You're the secretary, not me. <laughs> then why did you answer the phone? Because it's my phone, that's why. I forgot to ask the man's name, so what? Mr. Wells won't like it. <laughs> Look, miss, don't worry about that. The party will probably call back again. And when they do, I'll be... Come in. Excuse me, is this Studio B? Yes, sir. I was to meet Mr. Wells here. I'm Mr. Stone, his secretary. His secretary? Then who's Miss Wentworth? She's his private secretary. I am right out in the open. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, come right in. Mr. Wells should be here any moment. Thank you. How do you do, Miss Wentworth? Good evening, Mr. Stone. Hmm. Gee, that Orson's a pretty busy guy, ain't he? Phil, I warned you about saying ain't. Oh, that's right. He's a pretty busy guy. Am he not? <laughs> Just let it go, Phil. Now, Don, I wish that Mr. you and Stone, Dennis... Mr. here's would... a script the Theater Guild sent from New York. Thank you. And by the way, there was a phone call from Mr. Wells, but Mr. Benny failed to get the name. Oh, that's terrible. I said I was excited and I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Mr. Wells won't like it. Nuts to Mr. Wells! <laughs> <laughs> hey, gee, you'd think I'd murdered somebody. Now, Don, as I was saying, if you and Dennis would be... Now what? Come in. Pardon me, I'm looking for Studio B. I have an appointment. If he isn't here yet, have a seat. Good evening, Mr. Wells. Good evening, Mr. Wells. Good evening, Mr. Wells. Oh, Arthur! <laughs> Come right in! I didn't know there for a minute. I, well, I'm glad you were able to make it, Orson. I was wondering if you were Mr. going to... Mr. Stone, did Gabriel send in those sketches? The costumes for picture will be needing them soon, you know. Yes, Mr. Wells. I received that script from the theater. Good, good. good. Let me see it. Here you are, sir. Hmm, it looks like a very interesting play. <laughs> well. However, to finish the second act, we'll need polishing. Gee. Oh, Orson, before we get started, I'd like to have you meet some of the members... Miss Wentworth, did you cable Mr. Miller about the American rights to his new production, the one that opened last week in London? Yes, I did, Mr. Wells. And by the way, just before you arrived, a phone call came for you, but Mr. Benny didn't get the name. Snitcher. <laughs> I was excited, Orson. That's all right, Jack, but watch those things in the future. Oh. <laughs> oh, I... I will. I will, yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, Orson, before we get started, I'd like to have you meet the members of my cast. This is our announcer, Don Wilson. How do you do, Mr. Wilson? It's a pleasure, I'm sure. And this is Dennis Day, our young tenor. Mr. Day? How do you do? Dennis, don't <laughs> curtsy. <laughs> no, he's, 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 uh, you know, he's so polite. And, oh, yes, uh, this is our <laughs> orchestra leader, Phil Harris. Uh, good evening, Mr. Harris. Hi, Orson. Still scaring people? <laughs> Phil! Uh, don't, uh, don't pay any attention to him, Orson. He's always like that. Oh, I don't mind. He's rather amusing in his own crude way. <laughs> crude? That's very good. Uh, by the way, Jack, where's Miss Livingston? Oh, Mary's home in bed, Orson. She has a rather heavy cold. Oh, that's too bad. Has she got a nurse? I checked on that, Bob. No soap. <laughs> oh, what coarse language. I don't know where he picks those things up. Just the same. He's a very interesting study. Uh, 
don't you think? Oh, yes, yes, quite, <laughs> quite. Now, Orson, I think we ought to get started with my rehearsal. Did you have anything in mind for the first lesson? The first lesson? Now, let's see. Benny, Benny, Benny. Oh, yes. Hmm. You see, Jack, the reason you haven't gone as far dramatically as you feel you should is because you've been selecting the wrong vehicles. I have. Definitely. For instance, if your goal is the Academy Award, as you say, you should concentrate... Uh, Pardon me, Jack, there's something I must do. Miss Wentworth. Yes, Mr. Will. Take a telegram to Mayor LaGuardia, New York City. Yes, sir. You see, Jack, you should concentrate on the heavier and more legitimate type of drama. I understand. Well, uh, what would you suggest, Orton? Dear Mayor LaGuardia, <laughs> received your telegram, and if I'm in New York on the 29th, we'll be only too happy to attend the banquet. Well. However, we'll let you know in plenty of time if I ain't coming. Ain't? <laughs> oh, why, Orsa! And you said ain't. Oh, I'm surprised. Well, Jack, the use of the word ain't is sometimes permissible. You see, in this instance, by using ain't, I saved a word in a telegram. Oh. You don't have to tell him about saving anything. <laughs> Never mind you. That's all, Miss Wentworth. Yes, sir. Now, Jack, where were we? Uh, you were about to suggest a proper vehicle for me. Oh, yes. Now, the type of play that would offer you the greatest scope for emotional histrionics would be a literary classic, something like The Hunchback of Notre Dame. The Hunchback of Notre Dame? Mm -hmm. uh, you mean Charles Lawton's part? Exactly. Well, gee, that would be swell. Mr. Christian, come here! <laughs> uh, how's that? Uh, that's from Mutiny on the Bounty. Oh, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I got a little mixed up there, I guess. Uh, well, Orson, if The Hunchback is the play you feel I ought to do, let's try it out. I'm your obedient servant. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we get started? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Stone, did you bring the script of the hunchback with you? Here it is, Mr. Wells. Good. Now, Jack, here's a scene that we can start out with, which I think will give, give... Oh, pardon me, Orson. Come in. Excuse me, is Mr. Wells here? Why, yes, he is. It's your tether, Mr. Wells. Oh, come in, Max. You might as well measure me right now. Okay, Mr. Wells. Mark this down, Sam. Right. Now, Jack, I think we can take this scene where the king of France meets the gypsy dancing girl, Esmeralda. Now, let me glance at Next, a minute. Next, 15 and a half. 15 and a half. Chef, 42. 42. Wait, 36. 36. Leg, 29. 29. Come on, Sam. Goodbye, Mr. Wells. <laughs> Gee. Yes, I think this scene will be fine, Jack. Well, I'll do my best, Orson. Now, do you think I'll... Oh, Miss Wentworth. Yes, Mr. Wells. Take a memo to the tailor. No belt in the back. <laughs> now, Orson, as I was saying, do you think I ought to give my own interpretation of the hunchback, or should I mimic Charles Lawton? In other words... Oh, darn it. Excuse me. Hello? What? What? London? London, England? Oh, I think that's for me, Jack. Gee, London. Hello? Oh, hello, Miller. So nice of you to call. Yes, yes. Yes, I've heard splendid comment on your London production. I'd, I'd like very much to do it. Gee, all the way from London. I understand, Miller, but the Theatre Guild has sent me a script which I may have to do first, you see. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Phil, you better play something. This may take all day. Yes. My goodness, what a busy man. Now, here's the point, Miller. I'm committed to the Guild until May 30th. However, if you could arrange to hold the American right until I'm free. <laughs> Woodpecker's song played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. 
And Phil, I'm very glad to see that you're not a hypocrite. What do you mean, hypocrite? I mean your music was the same as always. You didn't play good just because we have a distinguished visitor. <laughs> Well, Orson, shall we get started with the hunchback of Notre Dame? I'm raring to go. Oh, now, wait a minute, Jack. Oh, uh, Mr. Wells, I have an important message to deliver right now, and I wish you'd listen to it and give me your frank opinion. Oh, I'd be glad to, Mr. Wilson. Don, Orson is here to help me. Well, now, Jack, this will only take a second. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, next time you're in the mood for attempting an appetizing dessert, go to your neighborhood grocer and ask him for a package of Jell-O. You will find it's not only economical and easy to make, but comes in six delicious flavors. So be sure to insist on genuine Jell-O and look for the big red letters on the box. Wow. How was that, Mr. Wells? Very good, very good. But I wish there was some place you could bring elephants in there. <laughs> <laughs> elephants? What an imagination. Well, let's get to me now, eh, Orson? All right, Jack. I see you're ready to play the hunchback. What did you do? Stuff a pillow up your back? No, no, that's this suit. I must have it altered. I... <laughs> Say, Orson, I was just thinking. Of course, I don't want to complain or anything, but... As I remember in the picture, uh, Quasimodo, the hunchback, had very little to say. In fact, all he did was grunt and groan. Not very dramatic, is it? Well, now that's where you're wrong, Jack. A groan or a grunt, if properly delivered, can convey as much emotion as a whole page of dialogue. Well, perhaps you're right, although I never thought of that. Now tell me, Jack, can you groan? Groan? <laughs> you ought to hear him on payday. <laughs> Phil, you're the only one I resent pain. Well, now that you've explained it, Orson, I think I can handle it all right. Very good. Then let's get started. Now, this particular scene calls for the King of France. I'll play that. Frollo, the King's High Justice. I'll play that, too. Hmm. Quasimodo, the Hunchback. That must be me, isn't it? Yes. And Esmeralda, the Gypsy Girl, or Miss Wentworth. Would you care to help us out, please? Delighted, Mr. Wells. Now, Orson, I noticed in the script here that Quasimodo rings the bells in the Tower of Notre Dame. Do you want me to ring them? No, I'll handle the bell. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, and oh. incidentally, uh, J Jack, yeah. at the uh, finish of this particular scene, you have a very dramatic speech where you tell Esmeralda not to be afraid of you. It's really the high spot of the play. Oh, well, I'll sure try and get it right, Orson. All right, then, let's proceed. We open first with Esmeralda and Frollo. Now, quiet, everybody. Quiet, everybody. Mr. Wells is about to rehearse. You have the first line, Miss Wentworth. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Let me go. Don't touch me. You have the hands of a devil. Great. For such talk, I could have you burned at the stake. I am the law. Yes, the law that drives my people out of France. You deserve it. You are thieves and swindlers. You are lazy and you live by magic tricks and sorcery. But you don't know the gypsies. I don't want to know them. I want to wipe them out with fire and sword. Every one of them. Uh, how, how was that, Orson? Just grown once, Jack. Oh, oh, I'm not twice. Now, at this point, King Louis XI of France enters the scene. Esmeralda speaks. Oh, thank heaven. The king approaches. Maybe he will listen to me. You will be heard. I will help you, my child. Your Majesty. But you must give me a good reason. They say you are a lot of thieves. Oh, no, Your Majesty. Whenever we steal, it is because we are hungry. Help us, child. Please help us. I will help you. You and your people will suffer no longer. <laughs> Go, go back to your, go back to your people, my child, and tell them that their king will see that they have food and shelter, and that in the future they shall be unmolested. For this, I needed a teacher. <laughs> Now, look, Orson, I don't know what's wrong, but I don't feel those groans. Maybe I ain't breathing right. Jack, don't say ain't. It's bad English. Well, for heaven's sake, you said it. That was in a telegram. Oh, well, Miss Wentworth, take a wire to Mr. Wells. <laughs> Dear Orson, I ain't breathing right. <laughs> and another thing, Orson, when do I get to that long speech of mine? It's right here at the top of the next page. Esmeralda speaks again. Continue, Miss Wentworth. Oh, thank you, Your Majesty. My people will always be grateful. Rest easy, my child. And now, goodbye. Goodbye, sire. Oh, wait, Your Majesty. Who is this ugly, misshapen creature that is staring at me? I'm frightened. That's your cue, Jack. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> uh, it is I, Quasimodo. Do not be terrified of me. I am not a man and not a beast. 
Yes, I am human, too. I have a heart and a warm thought. But people... Hey, wait a minute, Orson. You're drowning out my voice. Well, the script calls for that. I don't care. You don't have to ring them that loud, do you? I'm sorry. Try your speech again. Oh, Mr. Stone, will you ring the bells God. this time? I want to watch Mr. Benny. Yes, sir. Uh, go ahead, Jack. <laughs> it is I, Quasimodo. Do not be terrified of me. I am not a man and not a beast. The more look down Hello? upon Hello? Yes, he's here. It's Rita Wells, New home. York calling. Thank you. I have a heart Hello? that warms to others. Oh, the Hello, Harrington. Drive me off Listen, Harrington, I will I've been trying to reach you all day. My soul is a when do you think I'll get the proof of those books? In an ugly body. How do you hear, Harrington? You promised that two weeks and ago. And all that is good. Harrington, this is the last That is why I look at you. You are very beautiful. And when you come to me, I am over crying out loud. How can I act with all this going on? For heaven's sake. Oh, Mr. Wells, your suit is ready for a fitting. Thank you, Max. I'll try it on here. Oh, the heck with it. Play, Phil. <laughs> what I go through for a career. Folks, if you're looking for a swell dessert to serve for Easter dinner next Sunday, look no farther. Because here it is, the whole answer in a pastry shell, Jell-O Easter tarts, each one heaped to the brim with clear golden orange jello and several sections of tender juicy oranges. Yes, believe me, it's a glorious treat and just as simple as it is satisfying. To make it, all you do is dissolve one package of orange jello in one pint of hot water. Chill until slightly thickened, Divide three medium oranges into sections, drain them, and arrange in eight baked tart shells. Fill the shells with jello, chill, and then, if desired, garnish with whipped cream before serving. The result, ladies and gentlemen, is a truly marvelous dessert. So plan now to highlight next Sunday's dinner with one of the most delicious and intriguing treats you ever tasted, jello Easter tarts, a grand combination of plump, juicy oranges and rich, brilliant orange jello. number of the 24th program in the current Jello series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Say, Orson, I'm sorry I blew up the way I did, but I would like to become a dramatic actor. Well, Jack, those things take time, but I'll tell you what, come over to my show next Sunday. We're going to do June Mo Moon, and there's a swell part in it for you. Well, gee, I'll be glad to. Will I have to groan much? In uh, no. <laughs> no, Jack, there isn't a single groan in the entire play. Oh, gosh, and just when I had it down pat. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> J E L L O. And here's more fun and enjoyment for you. Tune in every Tuesday night for another swell half hour of Jello Entertainment, the famous Aldrich family. See your local paper or movie and radio guide for time and station. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> <laughs>